Okay, from this startup screen, what we're gonna do to open up a brand new file is we're gonna find the new tab, come over to the new project file and where it says template file, pull down construction template and start with an architectural template. Make sure it says new project and hit okay. Once Revit opens up a brand new template, there are no walls, nothing is in the drawing space here, okay? What it says on the first tab, this is level one. So we know we're on our level one tab. I always, again, make sure that my projects or my properties have been pulled if they're docked on one side to pull them over to the other side and dock them so that my properties are on my right hand side and that my project browser is on the left hand side. I also like to pull my windows out just a little bit so I can actually see what is actually laying out here. So I can see all the different uh, views and all the different pieces of the project I have here and my properties are on the right. Across the top of the screen, these are all of the tools that we're gonna utilize to draw, to, to uh, do all types of editing work. This is called the ribbon bar. So if we come across the top of the ribbon bar, there are tabs, the first being file. This is where we can jump in if we want to save, if we wanna open something else. This is where we get that file information. Okay. As we come across, we have the architecture tab, structure tab, there's a steel, systems, insert, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We will most likely be working through the architecture tab, the annotation tab, this is where we're going to play with dimensions and start noting things, and then over to the view tab. This is where we're going to be able to turn and look at things, whether it's in a section or a 3D view. Also, dealing with Revit, when it starts opening all of these different browser windows, it starts creating tabs across the top here. Playing with these view tabs to see two windows at the same time, this is gonna be important. And then of course, the user interface, if we ever lose the navigation bar or the project browser or something disappears from here that is a tool, this is how we get it back, all right? So as things happen, we'll pull these up and you guys can see uh, what's going on there, all right? So we'll talk about this as we start drawing, but when we start drawing, everything functions through the properties. So when we do anything, we come over here to find out information about that wall or that window or that door or that whatever, all right? As we come across the bottom of the screen, we've talked about this already uh, in our sample project, but this is where we can actually see the scale that we're drawing to. This is eighth inch equals uh, one foot. This is gonna be the detail level, uh, coarse, medium, and fine. Generally, always tell students to jump right into the fine tab. So if we change that to fine right now, we know that we are in the fine mode and we're not doing a course drawing and you'll see what happens there. And then also when we start drawing, make sure that your graphic display is set to hidden line. It's generally the default, but make sure it's set to hidden line. That way we're not actually drawing in shadows or colors or anything like that because that actually, uh, uh, we wanna be in that uh, hidden line, okay? All right, so let's jump into drawing a wall. So when we're going to jump back here to the architecture tab, to start drawing a wall, we're going to come down to the wall tab. Obviously, we're going to come to the wall tab. Now, the nice thing is if I just sit over top of the wall tab, it's going to give me a little more information about this tab. It creates a non-structural wall in a building model. It uses the type selector to specify the wall, blah, 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 blah. That's all fine and good. If we pull down the wall tab, we can go to wall architecture, structural, or wall by face. So right now, I just want to stick with the simple wall, wall architecture, and select that. What happens is your entire screen here, your ribbon bar changes, and so do your properties. When this changes, you need to be aware of what's happening across the ribbon bar on this blue line, or I shouldn't say blue, this, gr this green highlighted line up here on the top, all right, where my cursor is going back and forth, and then also in the properties. It gives you information in two places, depending upon where you like to go find it out but some location information is really important to understand, okay? Location line, base constraint, top constraint. Understanding this is probably one of the most critical aspects to creating a wall. Over here on the properties, it says basic wall, generic, eight inch. This is denoting that we have an eight inch thick wall. We can go ahead and assume that this is a cinder block wall because I always want you thinking about materials, what materials are going into this wall. So as I come down here, I want you to then get used to going through these processes, all right? So the first thing I want you to do is hit edit type.
So yours probably looks like this, right? So what I always like to do is I grab and I just pull this out just so I can see any additional information that's hiding, okay? Once I see any additional information hiding, I can now start working my way down through here and look at the systems, look at the family and where are we going. So the family is a system family basic wall. Type is a generic eight inch. Well, I wanna go right ahead and change this. I wanna start working with a true cinder block wall. So what I want you to do and get used to doing is if you're gonna change walls, hit duplicate. Once you hit duplicate, we're gonna rename this right now. So when you highlight this, we're gonna rename it the material that we're using to build the wall. So this is going to be an eight by 16, and X means by, all right, in the construction industry. And we're not gonna call it a cinder block, okay? We are going to call it a CMU, okay? Now that is concrete masonry unit, okay? <laughs> That's what it stands for. So there's gonna be a ton of abbreviations that you guys are gonna see and hear and use. So you're just gonna get used to it. So eight by 16 CMU, I'm gonna hit okay. Now, when we jump into the next thing, we're going to start working our way down from the top. Structure, edit. Now, when we jump into here, this is going to be, and again, I pull this out a little bit just so I can see. This is where we're going to get in and start editing the material and the structure, okay? The core boundary on both sides is an important aspect that we'll start working with more, okay? But that's going to be a place where we can deal with the core of the wall, okay? The structural materials on the inside. The structural material for this wall is just going to be a cinder block. The material, we're going to come down to where it says by category. Click on by category. And then there is a small box with three little dots. Those little dots mean search for more, continue more. Click on the little teeny box. When you click on the little teeny box, you are going to now get your material browser. Again, your material browser is probably rather small. And I would assume that you probably do not have um, the additional materials popping up in here. All right. So you probably have something that looks more like this. Right. What I want you to do is down here, this is your additional materials library. I want you to right away hit these little arrows that are pointing up so that you can see information starting to show up down here. Take and then stretch your windows out so that you can see more stuff. As more stuff is not showing up, what we can do is we can go into shows hides your library tree, and then we can start looking to see where there might be more information that you can gain, okay? Okay, to get these additional assets from the AEC material library, all right, what we would do is you hit this little library button, these little dots with the lines, come down and click on AEC materials, okay? When you click on that, what you should start to see now is additional materials showing up down here, okay? Uh, I'm not really sure what the lock is about. We'll have to take a look at that. This is where we'll find more stuff. If we can't find what we want already loaded in our project, we go to the AEC material library, okay? We can also make materials. So if there's a material that we just don't find, we can make it, okay? We can utilize other materials to build with similar types of structures, okay? So now what we're gonna do is at the top in the search bar, so we don't go scrolling through all this, type in CMU. And it should filter down. And I got Brick Common, Brick Soldier Course, Concrete Masonry Unit. We want concrete masonry units. So we're gonna select it. Once this has been selected, now we can come over here and we can start looking at the properties of that material. If we hit identity at the tabs at the top here, you can see concrete masonry units, concrete masonry units. It's important to see this because this is what will get tagged when we tag a material, okay? As a drafts person, as an architectural designer, you gotta tag materials, all right? Whether you're an interior designer or a structural engineer, you got to tell somebody what material you are going to use. So we got to be able to know that. This is where we'll change some stuff later. The graphics, this is what stuff is going to look like. Okay, surface patterns, backgrounds, foregrounds, cut patterns. Not going to do a whole lot with this now, but I want you to see where it is. The appearance, 
This is the appearance of what this will look like in 3D in realistic mode. So it will look like a cinder block, okay? And then of course the physical properties, this is the thermal uh, expansion coefficient of a cinder block, cinder block. And then this is all the thermal properties, the density, all right, permeability, all this kind of stuff. So Revit will be able to crunch all this information if we ask it to do so. So with all that being set up, you can see that. Just hit OK. And we have a concrete masonry unit. It's eight inches thick. All right. With that set, hit OK. Now we're good. We can work our way back out of here. We're not going to get into anything else in here right now. We're going to hit OK. Now our cursor has changed. It's a little crosshair. And now we're ready to start drawing walls. The other the only thing I want to talk with you about is the positions. We have location line. And this is important to understand the location line. As I go through this, if I keep wall center line, and I click and I start to draw my wall. I'm going to zoom in on this. There is now a blue dotted line in the middle of my wall. That means that if I were to go around and I start drawing a wall that's 10 feet, and I come down 10 feet, and I come around and keep drawing, this building is not going to have an exterior dimension of 10 feet. All right? This whole entire building is going to have an exterior dimension of 10 feet, 8 inches. Because by drawing on the center line, you then are giving it an additional 4 inches of material on every corner. So you have to understand that you're drawing with thickness. Okay? So we need to set that. So as you go through, go ahead and draw one wall that's going to be finished face center, or I should say finished face exterior, wall center line, and then you can change this location and do one that's going to be finished face interior, okay? You can change this up here on the ribbon bar, or you can change this over here in the properties. It doesn't matter, all right? So I'm going to change this one, finished face exterior. Again, I always tell students, draw clockwise, okay? Because finished face exterior is on the inside. If you draw counterclockwise, Finish face interior is on the outside if you're going around. So always get used to drawing clockwise. It just seems for me to make a whole lot of difference uh, and make sense. All right. Once you draw the walls, other than the size of the building, one being slightly larger than another, in a large building, you may or may not know which walls have been set to be center, interior, exterior, or the like. Other than, once you click on the wall, these little blue dot grips will start to show up. That is the location grips. These little tiny blue grips will let you know that it's on the inside, exterior, or center. Let's go ahead and let's dimension the walls that we've just drawn. To do this, go up to the annotation tab at the top of the screen, select it, and then go over to the aligned dimension. Select the Aligned Dimension tool. And then come down onto this green ribbon bar here. And I want you to make sure that the first selection does not say wall center lines. It says wall faces because we've been drawing by faces. Okay, we've drawn by finished face exterior, finished face interior. Select wall faces. And then make sure this says individual references. And then we're going to find, we're going to zoom in. And as you mouse over the wall, what's sometimes tough to see is the little tiny blue highlight. The black line will highlight in a dark blue. That's where you're grabbing the wall from, okay? So here, I can grab the end of this wall. I'm going to left click once. Don't have to hold it. I'm going to zoom out, move over, zoom in, find the other side of the wall, left click again, pull out press in my rollerball, pull up, and then drop the dimension by left-clicking again. Now, this process is one that in the beginning becomes very tedious. The process will become far faster the more you do it and will become almost a second nature type of thing. But it is something that we will definitely need to know how to do.